I'm Mark Bleacher, co-director of Cataract and Primary Eye Care at Will's Eye Hospital in Philadelphia. Just wanted to take a minute and talk a little bit about some of the new changes, new products, and some new thinking on the correction of presbyopia. Uh, presbyopia, as we often say to ourselves, is, is the holy grail of eye surgery. It's the one thing that almost everyone will deal with in their lifetime. It can be one of the most frustrating things to have to uh, happen to you. Uh, and curing it uh, would be almost a miracle. And our profession has been working uh, quite aggressively to try and address this, uh, both in patients who are, who are not yet in the cataract surgery uh, population and in cataract surgery patients. Uh, there have been many products and, uh, and procedures that have come and gone uh, to try and deal with this. Uh, most of it suboptimally. Uh, we don't have the perfect answer yet, but what's interesting is I think we're starting to get some, some real traction on some, of, some newer and uh, pending technologies that are becoming available. Uh, at this year's ASCRS meeting, AccuFocus announced the FDA approval of the uh, camera intracorneal inlay, which is a small aperture uh, pinhole inlay that can be placed in the cornea at 200 micron depth uh, through a pocket uh, created by a femto laser. Uh, the studies seem quite good on this. Um, it's not yet widely accepted around the world where it's been approved for a while, uh, but more recent uh, changes in the uh, clinical indications and surgical technique may improve the results enough to make this something that we here in the United States are going to adopt more aggressively. Uh, current FDA uh, approvals are a little limited at the moment, but practice of medicine should allow uh, surgeons to be able to figure out how to bring this to a wider range of, uh, of of patients both phacic and aphacic. Um, our patient population that we've done refractive surgery on all these years uh, are very anxious to, uh, as they get older, and many of them are, uh, to cure their, uh, their presbyopia. You know, they had 20-20 vision for many years if they had their surgery in their 20s or 30s. Now that they're in their 40s and 50s, uh, they may still have excellent distance vision, but they're a little frustrated and are, and are happy to have something done uh, to restore their near vision. So perhaps this will be something we can offer them um, there is a, uh, the hydrogel inlay as well that goes in a pocket also in the cornea uh, that changes the curvature of the central cornea to allow for uh, greater depth of focus. That's not yet approved here in the United States, uh, but is getting some good, uh, good feedback on clinical trials elsewhere. In the realm of cataract surgery, we've had a number of intraocular lens implants that have attempted to or purported to uh, cure presbyopia or give patients some degree of uh, better reading vision whether it's the pseudo-accommodative crystal lens uh, or multifocal lenses, uh, they've been available for a little while with some success uh, and are being slowly uh, more widely adopted. Uh, this year we've seen some, uh, some announcements from some of the big lens manufacturers for a wider range of uh, add powers on the multifocal lenses, uh, which hopefully will give a wider range of reading and intermediate vision for our uh, pseudophagic patients and uh, hopefully also decrease uh, some of the incidence of glare and halos that these lenses can produce. One of the big issues with using multifocal lenses, as everyone knows, is that everything has to be pretty perfect for you to get an optimal result. It's a great technology, and as I tell patients when I'm talking to them about it, there's, there's, always, a, there's always a price. So you don't get something for nothing. It use it, the multifocal lenses use as a trick of optics to try and give you distance and near, and there's a price to be paid for that. Um, so hopefully these newer lenses with lower add powers uh, will decrease uh, some of the issues that we're having and will lead to wider adoption. On the horizon, there are extended range of focus lenses, which uh, are not yet available in the United States, but have been uh, available in Europe for a little while, and they're getting uh, some very positive reviews as a way to uh, provide uh, not quite full reading, but to extend the, uh, the depth of focus for vision, so distance and mild, near, and intermediate with, uh, le again, less glare and halos and less issues related to an imperfect optical system. So it's, I'm very excited and, and encouraged that, that we seem to be making further headway. The true uh, holy grail of curing presbyopia would be to creating a true accommodative lens, uh, which unfortunately seems to keep proceeding into the future as much as we, we keep talking about it. So while that would be the perfect solution, I'm afraid in, in my career, in my lifetime, that, that probably will not come to pass. But, uh, but I think we're getting better and better results, and I'm happy that, uh, that we have these available. I look forward to working with the new technologies and uh, bringing them uh, as they get approved here to Wills so we can, uh, we can have our experience with them and, and uh, bring them to our patients.
thank you very much for your time and attention and uh, appreciate your support.